Yo, what's up guys? It's Casper and welcome back to another video. Today it's going to be a review of the current state of Battlefront 2. Um, going back from, I guess, when I started playing the game about a year after they um, basically fixed all the loot boxes and stuff and the character progression system. So that's around the time frame that I joined in. So today we're going to be doing a review of my time on Battlefront 2 and how the game was back then how the game was in the middle, and how the game is now, today, in 2024. Um, it's actually a pretty long, lengthy little discussion I'm going to go over, and hopefully I kind of cover every detail. This is not a scripted video. This is something just off the top of my head. I'm usually pretty good with these. I can get a lot of the points that I have on my mind in, and I usually don't miss anything. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. So to make sure, if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. We are on the verge of getting 850 subs. We are almost at that 1,000 sub mark. And um, we are very close to achieving a huge milestone for the channel. And I want to extend my thank you to all of my subscribers, viewers, um, everybody. You know, I just want to say thank you to you guys. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. Alright, so with that all the way being said, I hate long intros, but here we go. Alright, so in 2018, I was playing Battlefront 2 with my best friend, TDS Darth Wage, back when his original channel had about probably 400 or 500 subs for Battlefront 2. Um, he gave me a phone call and told me to get into the game. He, think, he thought that I'd be really good at it, so... That's kind of how I started. And back then, the game was still receiving updates. The game was still fresh and new. Um, yeah, it had its problems, but there was, a lot, there was a lot of people on the game. So going back to 2018, around August, September of that time, the game had massive popularity. The Mandalorian show was out, um, I think, around that time frame. I could be wrong on that, but that drove a lot of popularity at one point in the game as well with the introduction of the new Star Wars shows. So bottom line, the game was very popular. The game was um, not like it is today. So back then, um, as far as glitches and exploits go, right, since we're going to touch every topic, going back to the 2018 era of Battlefront 2, the only thing that really existed back then was just parries, I believe. And back then, only like the sweaty people knew how to do it, for the most part. You didn't see many people parrying. Back then, people were still trying to dodge behind you and hit you. You know, none of that angling and competitive play that's in the game now was in there back then. Um... It's crazy to just see how the game has changed, but um, I'm going to be hitting this uh, review on two different topics, um, one from a general playing standpoint and one as a, a content creator who, um, you know, his, is was extremely popular back in the day. Uh, that's what I'm going to go over it as, as a content creator and also a, like a genuine player. Um, so... With that being said, man, like the game, the game played fun. The game, like the gameplay was fun. Like you had a good time playing the game. The, like there wasn't anybody trying, like sweating that hard. Nobody was at the level that anybody's at today, at, at least for Xbox. I don't know how it was on other like platforms like PlayStation, but even on PC, I can confirm that as well. You know, like back then, it wasn't like that. Nobody played like that. Um, it was just fun, man. Like, I remember going back in the old days and playing on the OG Takodana map, the one that they wound up removing from the game. Um, you know, I, I miss that map. You know, the map with the two staircases and the bottom middle, you know, that had a little pathway in the middle and you could just walk underneath it and be in the middle of the map. And then you, there was two staircases on your left and your right. And then it led up to a different area of the map in the upstairs part. Like, yeah, I missed that map. Um, I missed the old target system. Um, that was fun. Um, for those of you guys who didn't know um, something about me um, in TDS Darth Wage, back, way back in the day, um, around, I think it was 
God, bro. I don't even remember what year it was now. It, it was probably three or four years ago. It was before. It was the night before the target system changed forever into what it is today. You know, with the ticket system, 35, 35. Um, it was uh, like back then, basically, for anybody who's new to the game or anything like that, who wasn't familiar with how that system played out, the old target system. Um, so basically, in an HVV match, um, if... Okay, so in an HVV match, there's four players on four players, as it is today. But back then, um, if you killed somebody, it didn't count towards anything, whether you killed someone or you died. Um, uh, one person on each team was basically assigned by the game randomly to be a target and the only way that you could gain points right was to either have your target die and count that as a point for the enemy team or you kill the enemy team's target and that counts as a point for you and what you could do back then now it did the maximum it would go to is 10 so once one team hit 10 it was the match was over but there was no time limit in the game. So way back in the day, um, me and TDS Darth Wage, we all came up with the idea of basically going into a match and absolutely farming people and trying to get as many kills as we possibly can in one game before the game ended. And um, we actually achieved something pretty incredible. Um, it w We actually managed to completely get uh 751 elims in one game um the night before the target system changed forever we farmed the three uh enemy players who are not the target for literally an hour and a half in one game um that was probably one of the greatest moments that i had was holding that world record that was never gonna ever be beaten um Pretty incredible, man. Like I, I can go back and think back on the day that we did that. It was pr a pretty incredible moment, and some of the some of those teammates actually. Uh, who was it? It was me, TDS Darth Wage. It was Kindred three fifteen, and it was Loco Chancho. And later down the road, um, they were both some of the first uh, SLE members, uh, being Loco Chancho, who later became SLE Penguino. And then Kindred became SLE Kindred later down the road as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, going back to how the game played, you know, nobody was trying to sweat like that. Like, you play Battlefront 2 today, and you just feel like it's like this ultra sweaty game, right? Even though it's not supposed to technically be like that, right? Like, okay, the game obviously... It's not Call of Duty, it's not Halo, it's not Destiny, it's not any other AAA FPS shooter game, right? It's a Star Wars game. You know, it's not, it wasn't designed to be like that, right? I guess. Um, so, you know, things don't connect right. You know, the game is kind of buggy, glitchy, and things like that, right? So, that's always been a big part of Battlefront 2, is the fact that where you aim at, <laughs> it may not hit you may have to lead your shot, you know, especially with Boba Fett flying at maximum speed, you know, it's practically impossible if he's strafing you from like 20 feet away at max speed and you're playing a blaster hero, you know, even sharp shot will miss, you know, it's, it's just one of those things, man, you know, um, the game was never truly balanced in a sense, um, I guess you could say, or never really felt like that fresh, you know, where it was like, okay, I'm on today, like, I'm not missing, like, you know, if I miss on Battlefront, it's like, do I blame myself, or do I blame the game, <laughs> you know, that's the way it kind of feels sometimes, and I wanted to actually go over that topic a lot, because there's a lot of glitches in the game, you know, like, there's so many that I can, like, I can just start naming some, but I probably won't even be able to name all of them, you know, like, there's just so many, but just, like, I guess the massive ones, um, you have Anakin's, um, the, probably some of the biggest game-breaking things are Anakin's, um, you know, Heroic Might glitch and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's just, 
I don't know, man. There, there's a lot of different things in the game that are glitched out and bugged out, and it's 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 just a lot to go over. Um, something really weird on the game is the passionate strike, the heroic might, the pull. Um, on on console, it's very difficult to hit somebody with a with an ability parry. I noticed on PC it actually does a lot better. You can parry with a, with abilities a lot better on PC as compared to Xbox or PlayStation because if you take a hit while doing it, it'll immediately cancel your ability out and that's why you wind up with the heroic might glitch, you know, where you just basically walk around with damage reduction and you're forced to die pretty much, but some of the biggest exploits in Battlefront 2 in today's standards are no knockdown Grievous, bunny hop Grievous, um, what else? Uh, frame trapping with Vader, um, basically Vader can choke you and you cannot escape it even when he's hitting you because the um, regular way chokehold is supposed to work. Um, it's supposed to choke you and then it, once you get hit one time, um, it's supposed to drop you. And with frame trapping Vader, you don't get that. Vader can just keep on swinging at you, or his team can. So, you know, there's that exploit. Also, for the light side, I mean, some of the biggest things, you have fin glitch. And there's like three different ways to do it, you know. And it's just, you know, every time I try and, you know, like play the game, that's all I seem to come across is just... You know, I wouldn't say that all the time. I mean, that's probably, what, like, 1 in 10 times? But still, you know, it's there. It makes the game not fun. Um, it's just a lot of different combinations of things that have kind of grown as time has progressed. You know, if we're going from that beginning stage to where we are in the middle and up to now. But, um, you know, to kind of go over, you know, I'm kind of touching on, like, the, the general play side and then also the competitive play side as well. And then also the content creator standpoint on top of that. So I'm trying to hit every nail on the head as it is now. Um, but for general play of the game as a regular, regular player, casual player, right, like I am today, um, you know, it, it's the game is honestly... It hasn't had an update since 2020 when Scarif came out. We got the two balls, BB-9 and BB-8. Instead of getting Ahsoka and Asaz Ventress, even though they were coded into the game as it was later found out. Um, what else is there, man? Um, yeah, so the player base is obviously way down. You know, nobody's like, this isn't a massively popular game anymore. You know, it's just not. I mean, sure, there's players out there and there's viewers out there. But it's not comparable to any platform, and I mean, any other game that's being, you know, supported and having new releases and new content. Like, take a look. All right, I have a perfect example for you guys, right? This game came out in, what, 2017, right? Okay, take a look at Dead by Daylight. I'm pretty sure it came out a year before that. It's still getting updates, and it's way mass it's massively more popular than this game because they continued support for the game. Despite... The direction the game is headed and favored and balanced towards you know whether it's the killer side or the survivor side it doesn't matter because the game still receives updates and support and it's massively popular whereas this game had massive popularity ea and dice decided to end support and go support battlefield 2042 which is a complete flop and failure way worse than this game ever was and i've even mentioned that in other content creator streams that are monetized and get thousands of viewers and one of those content creators uh, deleted my comments in the stream because of it. Because I put a comment in there that said, uh, EA and DICE deserve to go out of business. And I personally believe they do for what they did to Battlefront 2. Those are my personal opinions on that, man. Like, they had a great gem that they could have probably perfected until 2025. And they just butchered it. And they gave up on it. Because it didn't make money for them, so whatever. But those are my opinions on that. Um, so going back over that original topic, you know, um, it, it's just the game has gotten to a point where there's no one playing it anymore in rel in relation to where we are, where we were back then in 2018, right? I'll give you the perfect example of that. 
and how I know that because back then I never got stream sniped going back three years ago four years ago I mean even before I streamed this game I mean I've been streaming this game for several years um and there's only one other noteworthy content creator on this game besides me that I can think of that still does content for it like I do like consistently but you know just going off of that man <laughs> I, I I just you know I it's easy to tell right that the player base is going down because I get stream sniped all the time and that's where I'm gonna come into my next point as far as the like the player base and all, how all that stuff plays out and the competitive aspect of the game as well you know being a, a content creator I'm, I'm involved with pretty much everything that happens on the game right as far as HEV and showdown goes and you know who's all the best players and all this and all that right well I'll tell you man um I'll like for a year I'll be honest bro for years um back when I, back when I had the like the time to put into the game back when I had 20 hours, 30 hours a week to put into the game around that 2020 era. Um, just to give you guys some uh, background information, I was actually a really good player back then on Xbox. On Xbox, I was actually uh, in the top 10 best duelists uh, back then, like around 2020. Um, Back, uh, who was, I'm trying to think of some names, some old, old names. Um, there was, back, it was right after I started SLE, I think. Um, I had, yeah, that was when I just started SLE, and I had, I think, 25 people in there. And it was the first rendition of SLE, right after the debut video. And there was a guy... That went by, I think, oh, bro, what was his name before he switched it? I know what his SLE tag was, but I'm trying to remember what his tag was before it. I, I've, I've played with so many people. I'm just trying to remember this guy's name before it was an SLE tag. But anyway, his SLE tag was SLE Retro. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it, it was Retro before that. Before he changed it, I I'm not sure, but his name was Esli Retro, and he was constantly competing in one v one tournaments and things like that. And he was curious about Esli at that time because it was massive. You know, guys, back then, like when the game was popular, bet like that. I had group chats on Xbox in the hundreds and the and the hundreds, and it it was just massive. Like I was massive back then. Right? I mean, I still am today, but it, it was different back then, right? I knew everybody back then, right? It's, it, it's just, there's there's less and less people today. Like, you, got, you guys still watch my videos, right? That hasn't changed, but what has changed is the player count on this game. And back then, I used to have 300, 400 people at any given time. You know, now it's dwindled down to a point where it's like, okay, well... Oh, let's see who's on, <laughs> you know? Um, so, you know, and that's out of probably 30 to 50 people right now. But um, basically what I'm saying is, I know I'm skipping over a few points, um, but I'm getting to what I'm saying. Back then in 2020, Hook Swing was the newest thing that came out. There was no other exploits in the game, like animation canceling, where you do an instantaneous swing or any combinations, combinations like that didn't exist, you know, at least to my knowledge, and my knowledge back then was fairly decent about the game. Nobody that I was competing against was using stuff like that. Um, but one of my greatest accomplishments in the game was achieving a tie with Rank 7 Duelist on Battlefront 2. SLE Retro was his name. Um... It's funny, Kindred actually tied him too. We had the exact same score, but um, yeah, um, there was that. You know, I'm kind of going over accomplishments along the way too. But um, yeah, so in 2020, I was rank seven, tied rank seven duelist, and then I also held the world. I still hold the world record for the most elims ever as a team in HVV before the target system changed forever. But 
going back to the actual game itself, um, you know, as far as comp like competitive aspect goes, um, rank three, rank three duelist uh, was curious about SLE. Like I was saying, man, SLE was big back then, and rank three, rank three duelist wanted to join, and um, I ran him through the one v one tryout, and he beat me six to one. And that was that was right when the the unblockable thrust surge came out, and uh, <laughs> that's how I put a round on him. But uh, yeah, six to one, he won. That was he later became SLE Alok. So if you ever go back and watch my SLE intros, like if you if you look at my original SLE intro from way back in the day, um, I usually put it in the beginning of my live streams nowadays. But he's actually there in that video if you look closely. Um, when I'm, you know, doing the introduction to my channel and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so he joined in. Now we're going to go over competitive play, right? Um, you know, I've been away from the game and on the game over the course of these years. Um, so my time frames will bounce around a little bit, I guess. But as far as the competitive scene goes, um, it was pretty big back in the day, around the 2020 era. Like, I'd say from 2020 to 2022, 2023, it was pretty big. It had a lot of players in it. But the, the, way, that, the way that the game was played slowly shifted, right? I guess that's because of the lower of the lowering casual player count and the Battlefront 2 Xbox sweaties that still played the game. So as time progressed, I noticed that as new things came out and as new videos came out from other creators about how to, how to play the game, how to do exploits, how to do things like that, I noticed that the uh, general player base was more familiar with how to play in the newer generation of players you know um so like in comparison to me nowadays compared to what i used to be back in the 2020 era it's a whole like the game itself is totally different compared to what it was in 2020 like the, the knowledge of exploits has grown so much that the play styles have adapted to the exploits basically whoever's the best duelist Whoever's the best person on Battlefront 2 or whoever, you know, whoever's in that top 10, whatever. The only way that they're like, okay, so if you're going to classify it like that, right? Like if you're going to go into the competitive scene, you're going to be like, oh, this guy's number one. Oh, this guy's number five, whatever. Okay. If you want to be the best in the game, you have to be the best exploiter, right? You have to glitch the best. You have to do everything like that the best. You have to exploit better than somebody else to win the game right and that's another thing too that i want to go over this game was never meant to be played like that this game doesn't even have an official private lobby right where you can do things it doesn't even have that so you know it's not like halo it's not like call of duty it's not like destiny 2 you know it's very different this game the bullets you shoot they don't go where you shoot them at not all the time like only five percent of the time do they actually hit and connect the way that they should the hitboxes are totally messed up, you know, especially on a moving target. You know, this game is broken. It really is. Like, the game is actually really broken. And people abuse that and exploit that and call themselves decent and call themselves good. I know that because I used to be one of them. You know, I guarantee you, if everybody on this game put down every exploit, everything like that, and just played, like, how the game was meant to be played... No hook swings, no animation cancels, like, no exploits at all. I guarantee you, the game would go back to a time when it was in 2018, when everyone was just playing the game having fun. But now that all these exploits have come out, and, it's been, and they've been introduced to the competitive scene, those exploits create a skill gap. Because if you don't know how to do it, or you don't know how to do it well, and other players do that you're facing, well, guess what? That's their benefit and your loss. So they're going to be able to kill you better, kill you easier, and have a higher percentage chance of doing much better than you in the game. And lately, that's what's been happening to me because I don't have the time to put into the game to play the game like they do nowadays. That's why I play casually. 
you know, not to mention, I don't want to play the game competitively anymore because the game is not meant to be played like that. If I'm going to play competitively, I'm going to go play games like Destiny 2, right? Where I can go on there, be six months rusty, and be a top 1,000 player across Xbox, PC, and um, PlayStation, where there's millions of players, right? Or at least 500,000 a day, right? So, I mean, that's what I'm going to do. I'd rather go to Halo, right? A competitive game. That's where I'd rather be at. See, this game was never meant to be played like that. It wasn't. And you can see that the moment that you pick up another game, like X Defiant. I mean, even X Defiant is better than this. Yeah, I noticed X Defiant is actually worse on the scale of balance and hit registration. Like, but it's better than Battlefront 2. And there's competitive play for that game as well, despite that game's issues. And that game gets maybe 100,000 players a day. I was looking at the stats, man. This game, Battlefront 2, only has several thousand players a day on Xbox that I'm aware of. You know, it's hard to find the real live information because it's not listed. But, you know, it's there if you, can, if you look hard enough, right? You can find some type of general, you know, player base counter. Um... But, yeah, I'd, like I was saying, I'd rather go to Halo, where I recently beat somebody that I wouldn't say was a Pro Circuit player, but definitely had knowledge about Pro Circuit Halo, right? And said that he was familiar with that background and played in that field, right? So one could assume that he'd be a Pro Circuit player. You know, I beat him. I beat that guy. I posted it to my community feed, right? That was on PC, so I didn't make a video about it. You know, I couldn't record that. Um, so, but I posted a community feed about that and uh, wound up beating a Pro Circuit player on uh, Halo 2 Anniversary. But I'm just saying, like, where I'm going to be competitive at, you know, that's where I'm going to be. I'm not going to be here playing competitive. I want to play this game and have fun. I want to play with my friends and just play the game and have fun, man. That's what I want to do. Like, the game is so... Not to mention, bro, like, going back and looking over all the old videos and stuff that have been out, you know, like, back in the day and everything, man, like, all these people, right? All these toxic people, man. Um, Just constant harassment. Everything, bro. Like, you guys have no clue what I've been through, man. If you want an idea... Of what I have been through on this game. The harassment. The trolling. Everything. The DDoSing. If you want a good I like if you want a good idea of what I've went through on this game once this game died, right? From like 2021 onwards, right? Take a look at my I quit video on YouTube, right? Like I literally made a video named I Quit YouTube. If you want an idea of what I've gone through these past three or four years, you should watch that video and, and witness the toxicity that I went through because I was seriously debating doing it when I made that video, when I made that stream after it was over. I sat there in front of 16 people, right, taking their shit for two hours, right, to the point like just literal cyber bullies, bro. Literal cyber bullies, you know? And uh, that's what I've been dealing with all these years, man. These people, they send me messages. And they've done the same thing to other content creators. I'm not going to name names because I don't know if they want me to name their names. But it's the same thing, dude. Like, there used to be a time when you just talk trash and that's it. These people go out of their way to constantly stalk you online. Every time you do a stream, every time you do a video, every time you hop in a party chat, right? And they're there. They constantly harass you, dude. It's twisted, bro. It's literally twisted. Like, this game, I don't think there's any game out there that's as toxic as this game. Like, for you guys, what you're going to see, what you're going to see is toxicity for the average player, is going to be trash talking messages and teabagging in the game, right? That's all you're going to see. 
Maybe if you join a party, you might get shit talked by some random Joe who thinks he's good, but he's not. But being a content creator, you know, having everyone know who you are, you know, having lots of connections, lots of people to play with, lots of having like knowing lots of people, like, dude, there's tons of people out there that just say the most hateful shit, like literal evil shit, man. And I don't know how I've dealt. I don't know how I've dealt with this shit for so long, bro. Honestly, you know, I don't know how I've kept on making videos for this damn game when, you know, I have the top, like the toxic side, constantly fucking harassing me, like literally. But yeah, I mean, that's another thing too, man. You know, getting off that topic, um, the constant stream snipes, right? When I try and have fun, that gets old, man. Nobody enjoys that shit. Like, yeah, sure, it might be entertaining to watch a stream snipe, but bro, every single Battlefront 2 stream that I've done for the past year, because the game is so damn dead, every single one of them I've been stream sniped on. Almost every single one of them. Like, these people... Like, obviously, being a creator, I announce when I'm gonna stream... Right? So my viewers know when I'm going to do it. But that's also letting the other people know from the toxic side when I'm going to be live. When I'm going to be on the game. So it's just like, wow, man, what do I do? Like, I'm like I'm literally screwed either way. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, it doesn't, man. You know, I have, I have, like, people posting like, TikToks about me, and, like, just, the toxicity is out of this world, man. Like, somehow, like, bro, I, like, <laughs> if you guys, like, I don't want to talk about certain things, because some of the cyber stuff just goes too far, man, but I'll just, I'll just put it out there, bro. I post, like, I shared a picture of me, like, probably two or three years ago, and somebody literally photoshopped it, just to be funny, and literally made my head three or four times bigger, right? And then made a TikTok and attached my gamer tag to it and claimed it was me and put me in a video with like the top 10 worst Battlefront 2 players ever, right? Like, come on, man. You know, tossing it around. Like, bro, you guys has you guys have no idea. Like, these people have literally just shit talked me to no end, made up shit just to fucking troll me. And then later down the road, a month later, tell me, oh, yeah, I was just talking shit, spreading rumors about you. Like, man, come on. This shit is so lame, dude. Like, I don't get it. You know, it's like, it's almost like I try and think about it sometimes. Like, honestly, I try and think about it. I'm like, why do they do that? Why? And the, the only thought that comes back to my head is, is that they're angry right? They're angry that they don't have the exposure that I have. They don't have that. That's the only thing I can think of. You know? Like, why else would they troll me? Why else would they make up shit? Like, why else would they do shit like that? Why? I keep on asking myself that question, and I think I have the answer. It's because they're jealous. They, or either that, or they want to stay relevant, or they want to be known in the community even more than they are in their own inner circle. You know? Like, they want to have that exposure. That's why they stream snipe. That's because they think it's funny, and also, they're out there on the stream. But, you guys know my honest point of view about the game and everything. Um, you know, ever since TDS Darth Wage quit playing the game, you know, I don't blame them one bit for quitting the game. I really don't, man. I really don't. You know, he's doing his own thing now on a different channel. And that other channel's at about 2,000 subs. His channel's doing great. You know, he's got videos with multiple tens of thousands of views. You know, he's doing fantastic. And I greatly support him in that, you know. And it's just like, you know, I try to branch out and do other things for you guys but it just seems like nobody wants to watch that stuff you know and i want to thank those of you that do you know but i'm out here like i only have a certain number of hours each week to make content for you guys and most of the time that just falls on one day 
you know, I work 50 hours, 60 hours a week. And then I, and then immediately I have this to do, right? Cause I take it serious. I take you guys serious. I make content for you every week, no matter what it is, you know, like even with this video coming out today, and then I'll also be live streaming later, you know, and then on top of that, I'll be doing other videos, branching out to do other things too, to see how that does. But it's just like, you know, I just wish some of you guys would pay a little bit more attention to other videos, other things I do. And this is also a conversation about how you guys can kind of hear me out, because I haven't done one of these in a long time. And you guys can hear me out and kind of, like, just see who I am as a general person, the way that I'm speaking to you, right? You know, um, it's just gotten to a point to where it's getting irritating playing this game, if I can be honest. It's getting irritating. Nobody likes hopping on the game, playing, getting stream sniped, because I'm a known name on the game, right? Everybody knows me. It's just, it's constant, non-stop harassment, right? I'm not even bothered about the stream sniping. It's the harassment that just bothers me, bro. Like, the, the endless shit talk, right? It's, it's, it's like personal shit, too, you know, because... You tell one person one thing, it runs around the community, right? Especially being well-known. it's It'll go faster than someone who isn't, you know? So, you know, personal details that I've exposed out there have circulated and stuff like that. You know, things about me and my family. You know, like, the mistake of putting a picture of myself out there certainly has. You know? But I really don't care, man. At the end of the day, I have learned to not care. Is it irritating? Sure it is. Do I care anymore? Yeah, I do, but not as much as I used to. But I just try and let it go nowadays, man. I in my head I justify it. I justify the like not caring by trying to understand in my own head that they're doing it because they want attention, right? And um that's something that I've had to learn through the years, you know. But um yes, the current state of Battlefront 2, for me personally, as a content creator, it is not fun. I am doing it for you guys. Not because I want to do it. I'm doing it for you guys. And, um, you know, the, the game is just not there anymore. The game is dead. What else is there to say? You know, this community is toxic. I hate it. I don't want to be a part of it. I wish they'd leave me the hell alone. But I'm all they have. And they'll keep on coming. And I'll never quit. Because I have you guys who support me. So whenever you see me streaming. And having a hard time. Throw me a like. Throw me a sub. Leave me a comment. A supportive comment. Believe me. These trolls. They leave a lot of negative comments. They really do. Like they come into my live stream chat. Hell. My last live stream I did on PlayStation. I had 20 alternate accounts come in there. And just troll my chat. I had to literally sit there in the game and almost get booted out. I had to move my joystick while banning people in my chat. You know? Like, come on, man. <laughs> Just leave some positive comments sometimes, guys. I know you're out there. But I'll never stop making content. Nobody will, nobody will ever force me off this game. You know? My old, my very old nickname, my very old nickname on this game was King Casper. And it holds true to this day. But, anyways, that's what Wade used to call me back then, I guess. But, um, yeah, I guess with that being said, man, and this video has been a lot longer than I thought it's been, um, I'm going to do some other videos as well. I'm going to make one about Destiny 2. Um, and then you guys will see me live at around 5 o'clock. I'm going to get some videos in for X Defiant. Maybe some Halo content. Not sure yet. But anyways, guys. Um, this is my little video on Battlefront 2. If you guys enjoyed it. Enjoyed listening to me. Maybe you got to see a little bit more of me than you normally don't get to see. Um, I, hopefully, ho I hope that you get to... Um, see kind of where I'm at with everything, 
and who I am as a person talking to you, right? Um, but with that being said, I'll go ahead and end the video here. If you guys enjoyed listening to me, make sure you drop a like, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, man, please. Um, if you want me to do more of these, let me know. If you want me to get more people on here doing these types of videos, let me know. Um, love you guys, man. I'll catch you in the next video or the next stream. Later, boys.